Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're making burrata. Please hold for a very important message. This was supposed to be a burrata video, but it didn't quite work out. Uh, because I used a different starter culture than I normally do to make uh, pasta falada cheese, it didn't stretch as it was required to do uh, near the end of the process. However, I'm going to post this video because not every cheese can be a success. So let's check out how not to make burrata, but make a very good uh, and very nice tasting table cheese. So it all starts with a good milk and I'm using Inglenook Dairy's full cream milk. And this is how I heat my milk. I've got a small pot underneath the larger pot, which also has some water in it and it creates steam and heats the milk. So the ingredients for this cheese whether it be a failure or not, is 10 litres or 10.5 quarts of whole cow's milk, a quarter of a teaspoon of thermophilic starter culture, an eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic starter culture, one sixteenth of a teaspoon of lipase, that's calf lipase I'm using, that's been diluted in a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, a quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, Half a teaspoon of single strength liquid rennet, that's 2.5 millilitres, that's diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. And in this instant I'm going to need a saturated brine solution. Now I'm just whisking all the cream that uh, is in the milk through. So we're just checking the temperature, we're heating the milk up to 35 degrees Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. And then because I've got this pot on a pot thing, it's, it keeps heating up, so I've just taken that off. So once we get to the right temperature, we're going to add the starter cultures. So this is where I probably made my first mistake. That is a lot of thermophilic culture. I probably didn't need to add the mesophilic starter culture, which I'm adding now. Anyway, so cover that and we're going to allow that to rehydrate for five minutes. Five minutes later, we're going to stir the cultures in. And just a quick check of the temperature and it looks alright still, which is good, hasn't crept up too much. So we're going to cover that and allow it to acidify the milk and ripen for one hour. So one hour later, you notice that the cream has floated to the top there. So we're just going to give that a quick stir top to bottom to stir the cream back through again. Just check the temperature again. It's dropped by a couple of degrees, but that's okay. We're going to add the lipase now. Now calf lipase tends to make a cheese more piquant. It adds a certain spiciness to the cheese, as the Italians say. So just stirring that through, now we need to let that rest for 15 minutes to do its magic before adding the, uh, the next two ingredients which are, the, which are the calcium chloride and the rennet. So just give that a quick stir again because the cream has floated to the top again. I'm going to add our calcium chloride solution that was diluted in that quarter cup of water. So just stirring that through. Now you'll notice there's, there's some fat floating on the top there. Um, it's probably the best time now to scoop that off before we add the rennet and coagulate the milk. Now this happens sometimes when you've got a fairly fatty milk. Now we're just checking the pH. It should be about 6.5 at this stage. Now 
and that was okay so I moved on to the next section and we added the rennet so just do that for no more than one minute And then we just cover that and we allow it to set for 45 minutes. So 45 minutes later we check for a clean break, which is fairly easy to do. You take your curd knife, put it in a 45 degree angle, pull it up a little bit and it should be a clean line in the split. Now if it's not like that, if it's a little bit sloppy, then we wait for another 15 minutes. Now I'm not using a curd heart because I need to cut it fairly large, 2.5 centimetre or 1 inch cubes. So I'm doing the diagonals first, so at 45 degree angles and cutting the curd. The curd cubes are pretty large there. They should be a little bit smaller and then I'm doing the verticals there. And then perpendicular to that. And once around, all done. So we're going to cover that and allow the curd cubes to heal for five minutes. So you can see a little bit of whey on the top there. So that's good. And we're just going to stir and cut some of these chunky bits of curd. There's some rather large ones there with the side of the spoon as I'm stirring. So just make sure you get them fairly even sized. They're quite large there. They probably could be cut a little bit smaller. But as I'm stirring there, you'll see that I am continuing to cut each of the large ones once I discover them. So the temperature has dropped a fair bit. Uh, normally it should be 35. It's dropped down to 30. So we're going to start heating that up now as part of the recipe and we're going to increase the heat to 42 celsius 108 fahrenheit over the course of 30 minutes so this shrinks the curd a little bit and it also helps the thermophilic starter culture to begin working its prime working uh, temperature is over 38 degrees celsius so you can see that the curds have shrunk a fair bit uh, and they're probably small enough at this stage I probably shouldn't have gone on to the next stage. The temperature's spot on. This is probably okay. I should have put my hand in there, grabbed a handful of curd, and just done a quick test by squeezing it and then uh, checking if it breaks apart. Now, instead, I stirred for another 30 minutes, which I think was a big mistake. Because of all that extra starter culture, it's over-acidified, and by adding this extra 30-minute step in, I've now reduced the curd size way down, as you can see there, way too small, and they don't have enough moisture for a pasta filata cheese, which is what I'm trying to create here, which is a burrata. Now, burrata is essentially a mozzarella with a cream uh, and pieces of mozzarella inside it, like a little bag of uh, creamy goodness. So you need to have a stretchy, Pass off a lot of cheese to achieve this. So normally we'd allow this to rest for an hour and a half, which I did in this case. And uh, that was also a big mistake because the curds shrunk even further. Uh, and you'll see that in a second when I drain them. So normally line a colander with a cheesecloth. So you can see I've got a wet cheesecloth there. I did boil that with all the other stuff when I uh, sanitised all the equipment. Always boil your cheesecloths, curd nerds. And we're putting that over a colander which has also been sanitised. So we're going to drain the curds and whey through the cheesecloth. Now you can retain the... Uh, the way there if you wish for whatever you want to do with it but uh, 
my veggie patch is now officially dead so I'm not going to put it on anything and I didn't have any other uses for it at the time. Now you can see that the curd size way too small. They almost look like uh, I'm making a parmesan cheese uh, for the size of them. Anyway, so I'm pressing down now trying to get it to form a single curd slab and as you can see they're not really knitting together because they're so tiny. Uh, so this is my first, well, first issue, second issue for sure. Anyway, after having done my best, I then just covered it with the lid from my pot and allowed it to form a slab. Normally, normally it would form into a lovely, nice slab that kind of looked like a bit like uh, poached chicken. So as you can see, it's still not in a slab. <laughs> It's kind of a bit of a disaster. Anyway, so I soldiered on, poured it into a big stainless steel bowl, um, ready for the stretching period. Um, I did check the pH and my test strips, I didn't think must have been very accurate. So the pH should have been between 5.3 and 5. Uh, I estimated that even though the test strip indicated it was about 5, I think it was well below that. Once it gets below 5, it doesn't stretch very well at all. Anyway, we're pouring water that is 85 Celsius or 185 Fahrenheit over the curds to get them to knit together. And they kind of knitted together okay. As you can see there, it's a little bit stretchy. But when I go to pull them apart, you'll notice that it, they don't stretch like a pasta filata cheese should stretch. I should be getting a shiny surface and I can't even achieve that. So it's a little bit more crumblier than stretchy which to me indicates that the cheese has gone past that uh, pH of 5 and is well below that too acidic so as you can see as I work it wasting a lot of the fat that's in the cheese now note I am wearing thick heavy rubber gloves and that works too now I drained off the first lot of water and then refilled it and tried to get a stretch going and still not much luck there. Certainly won't be making burrata with this cheese. So it wouldn't go shiny either, which is another indication that your uh, acidity is way too high or the pH is way too low. Same thing. Anyway, so I kind of gave up, so, but normally I don't give up, so I thought, well, I'll soldier on. So I drained the water, left the curds overnight, and then came back to it. And you can notice it looks kind of like it's knitted together, and I decided to repeat the entire process. Now, if I had a pH meter, I would have been a little bit wiser and not even done this step, because it was kind of like a waste of time. So with a nice clean bowl, I'm going to put the cubes that I just cut back into the bowl. And you can see, at least I could cut it into curd cubes this time. Last time it just all fell apart. So I'm going to add the hot water over it again, which was uh, 85 Celsius, 185 Fahrenheit pull that over the top and I'm trying to get it all to knit together but you can see that there's so much fat being lost in the form of cream during this second stretch it certainly wouldn't have been the creamy um, burrata that I was after so I poured that off not stretching going crumbly and to me that was a, an indication that Yep, the acidity was just off the scale. Kind of getting a little bit of a stretch, but not playing the game. So it was time to try and save this cheese to get it into something more edible. 
So I formed it into a, a ball as best I could, went and got a small cheese mould that was clean and uh, placed that in the hot curds. I placed the hot curds in the basket, put a follower on top and basically moulded it. So then I filled the bowl with cold tap water for 15 minutes and left the basket in there to solidify it a little bit. And then once I did that, I then went and got my brine solution out of my cheese fridge and needed to get some salt into the cheese. And brining is the best thing to do it with a cheese like this because it's already been knitted together. So instead of flapping around, I decided to pop it into the, the brine for three hours and turn it at an hour and a half because there wasn't much weight in it and it wasn't very dense, so I think that was going to be enough salting for it. So after the three hours, remove it from the brine. Now I had taken out of the basket at the time that I flipped it over in the brine, at the hour and a half mark. Now I noticed a couple of bits just fell off. They were where the follower hadn't quite pressed it down properly. And there we go, there's our cheese. Now we needed to let that dry a little bit. So I placed it under my normal food umbrella and allowed it to dry for 24 hours and turned it every six hours to ensure even drying. So as you can see, the cheese turned into a cheese. It wasn't the burrata that I wanted it to be. Obviously, it looks like a pressed um, pasta falada cheese. However, not wanting to waste those precious curds, although most of the cream that was in the milk probably went into the water when I was stretching it, let's not forget that there is still a lot of nice protein and hopefully some creaminess uh, left in the cheese. I used a small basket to um, press this, so I actually just pressed it under its own weight. It's a fairly solid cheese. Uh, so, pasta falala style, uh, maybe, who knows. But we'll see what happens when I get to taste it. So I'll have a little sneaky taste first. I did brine this for uh, three hours only, so I turned it at an hour and a half. fairly dense oh well it's wide inside I suppose it's something it's uh now I kind of expect that the rind will be a lot saltier than what the center of the cheese will be very dense it's Fairly flexible, it's not cracking per se, so that's, all right, so that's enough, maybe. Anyway, so that's, that's that. Now, what I've also got here is we just picked some basil from the garden and Kim made a lovely basil pesto. And these are fresh tomatoes from my veggie patch. These are what are known as uh, mortgage lifters. So these are... Uh, absolutely delightful, great flavour. Heirloom tomatoes, can't get any better than that. And obviously I just got some plain salted crackers. So what I'm going to do, I'll have a little bit of cheese first, just to test it. Don't want it turning out terrible. As a fresh cheese, it's fairly edible. It, I don't know, it, it kind of reminds me of store-bought cheddar, but not aged as much. Mmm. Quite nice, quite nice indeed. Just the right amount of saltiness. So I'm quite impressed, even though that was a dismal failure. Um, yeah, well, what can you do when your burrata doesn't quite go 
as well as it should. So what happened to this cheese? Um, I think that the acidity was way too low, so it went down past uh, 5, a pH of 5. So that way it didn't stretch adequately. Um, the uh, starter culture I used was a little bit different. Uh, there was more of it seen to be in the packet. Uh, it was uh, only two thermophilic cultures. Uh, so that was a little bit different. So I could probably have stirred for 30 minutes less to get the proper pasta filata cheese. Um, and then I would have been able to make the burrata because I've got like two litres of cream sitting in the fridge that I'll have to make butter out of now or go and find some more milk, um, which is not as easy as you think in these uh, troubled times. People keep buying it, um, as in um, uh, well, stockpiling, even though milk has a very short shelf life. People are still buying it like crazy, but... You know, I'll have to get some more milk and try again because uh, I really do want to show you how to make burrata. Anyway, let's try some of this. Um, I think it's known as a, a Calabrese salad, even though the, the it's pesto, not um, just the uh, basil leaves. So I'll put a bit of that onto the cracker. So some of Kim's homemade pesto looks lovely. I think she used um, cashews instead of pine nuts, which is fine. You can do that. That's no hassle. All right, a little bit of tomato. And we'll have a slab of cheese on top. And um, let's check that out. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Beautiful. Absolutely delightful. That cheese just makes it. it. Really does give a a good impact of flavour. I hope the cracker doesn't go everywhere. Mm. Maybe I should have got a thinner slice. Very very nice, nice, good combination. So really, you know, even if your cheese doesn't work, and you've got some curds, press them, see what happens. This is a pretty good eating cheese. You know, we're gonna eat, we'll eat this over the next week or so, maybe a little bit longer. I could probably backpack half of it, but certainly a great table cheese. Salty, firm, uh, nice flavor to it. So I'm not disappointed. Uh, we got a cheese, but the yield, oh, a lot less than what I would normally get, that's for sure. Probably in those, uh, the stretching periods, I probably lost half the cheese easy just in milk fat going down the sink so that's a bit unfortunate anyway i always like to show my successes and my failures and this is well kind of a failure but it didn't go down the sink it's ready to eat it's okay so it's not too bad so quite happy with that anyway thank you for watching curd nerds hopefully i'll make a burrata video soon even though this one was supposed to be one but we'll give it a go again uh, you know, uh, as I always say, keep calm and make cheese. Make it again. So if you want to buy the cultures to make this cheese, then pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Uh, don't forget that we've got merch on the merch shelf down below. You can buy all the cool t-shirts that I wear during the videos. Not this one, obviously. It's a little bit too cold. But uh, yeah, the merch shelf is down below. We ship all over the world. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.